Okay, guys, before you run away and say that vocab is not important on the SAT, I'm gonna stop you right there. Vocabulary is definitely still an important component of this test. Hey guys, it's Jen. I'm a test prep tutor helping students learn all the ins and outs of standardizing exams. I also make educational content here on YouTube. I discuss test taking strategies, study tips, and today I want to talk to you all about studying with flashcards. So I'm going to talk about why flashcards are such awesome study aids. We'll discuss how you can apply flashcards to your SAT studying. And I'll also share a couple of bonus tips for how you can maximize their effectiveness. So if you're excited about this content, give this video a like. It tells me what content you guys like to see so I know what videos to make more of in the future. Also, while you're here, why don't you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. All right, guys, let's get into it. Let's talk about why flashcards are such awesome and popular study aids. There are a lot of evidence-based research on the effectiveness of flashcards. It's basically scientifically proven that studying with flashcards, it's super effective when used in the right context. And we're going to talk a little bit more about context in a second. Basically, the idea behind flashcards is a principle called active recall. This is where you are actively retrieving information that you've learned in the past from your memory. And every time you do that, you are reinforcing those neural pathways. So context does matter, like I said. Depending on what you're studying, flashcards may not be the most effective tool. Other study methods may be better, but there are some situations where flashcards are ideal. So flashcards are especially useful when you are learning fact-based information or information that's relatively contained. So for example, if you're studying dates of important historical events, or you're trying to learn the capital cities around the world, this is going to be a very effective tool. When I was in high school, we had to memorize every country and capital in the entire world, and I definitely made really good use of flashcards. Next, let's talk about how to apply flashcards to your SAT studying because this may not be quite as intuitive. I'm going to give you ideas for every section of the exam and the types of cards you can use for those. Let's start with the reading. So in this section, the most obvious choice is to make vocab cards. Okay guys, before you run away and say that vocab is not important on the SAT, I'm gonna stop you right there. Vocabulary is definitely still an important component of this test. Yes, the types of words that show up on the new SAT, 2016 SAT, is going to be less obscure than some of the words that may have shown up on prior exams. But vocabulary is still a very central component. So what I want you to do is anytime you're going through a test, whether it be in the passage, in the questions, or in the answer choices, as soon as you come across a word that you do not know, plop it onto a card. You can write the word on the front, and then on the back, you are going to write the definition, duh. Then you're going to write a couple of synonyms. Even better if the synonyms are new words to you also, so you can cross learn a lot of these words. You also want to write a sample sentence that makes use of this word. And if possible, try to come up with a picture of some sort or a mnemonic device that helps you learn this word. The idea is to create super rich cards that are meaningful to you so that it increases your engagement and it increases your long-term retention of this word. Next up, let's talk about the writing section. This is a great opportunity for you to learn grammar rules using flashcards. So let's say you're trying to learn coordinating conjunctions, which are used to join independent clauses. On the front, you'll write coordinating conjunctions, and on the back, you're going to write that really handy mnemonic fanboys, which is for and nor, but or yet so. This is the exhaustive list of all coordinating conjunctions. This will be an example of a very helpful flashcard. You can also learn your punctuations this way. You know, you got your semicolon, colon, comma, m dash. You can make a card for each of these with the punctuation on the front and then the rules for how to use them on the back. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for the writing section. Then let's talk about math. And I've got quite a few ideas for the math section. So one really obvious example would be formulas. Pythagorean theorem, standard equation of a circle, the discriminant, 
all of these are really facts and equations that you have to know right off the top of your head. So it will be really helpful to have them on a card that you can then drill very quickly. You can also extend this to concepts like how to complete the square or how to recognize a difference of squares. Again, things you need to know cold. Another idea here could be questions. So as you're going through practice exams, maybe you come across a question that you think is really difficult or you come across a question type that you miss very frequently. Take one of those questions as a sample and put it on a flashcard. Question on the front verbatim from the practice test. And then on the back, you can write down the step-by-step -step solution to this problem. That way you can go through these, mix them up and drill yourself. All right, now that we've talked about how to apply flashcards to your SAT studying, I wanna share a couple of tips with you that make it even more effective. Tip number one, I want you to handwrite your cards. It's very important that you physically engage with these cards. When you make that brain to hand connection, it really helps you reinforce the things you're trying to learn and it helps you retain it for longer. Okay, so handwrite your cards. Tip two, I want you to try to study both ways where it makes sense. If you're looking at a vocab, maybe start with a definition and try to conjure up the word in your head. Same thing with formula, start with a formula and try to conjure up the name of the formula. Now, this won't really make sense for those math problems I talked to you about. It wouldn't really make sense to start with a solution, right? And trying to work back to your answer. But where it makes sense, try to do it this way because it will force you to have to work a little bit harder once you change perspective and basically study backwards. Tip number three, I want to challenge you to say your answers out loud. It's one thing to just think it in your head. Sometimes that misleads us and makes us think we have it mastered more than we do. But once you say it out loud, you may realize that you actually have to study a little bit more. You don't have to say your answers to anyone in particular. You can just say it to yourself. It may be a little bit awkward in the beginning to talk to yourself. But guys, if I can sit in my room and talk to a camera, you can do it with your flashcards. Tip number four, this one's kind of fun. I want you to try setting a timer. It could be for one minute, two minutes, or five minutes, but you want to run through your cards very quickly. And this will work particularly well for facts like maybe vocabulary or formulas. Tip number five, this is a really big one. I want you to space out your studying, both within a single session as well as between sessions. This makes use of a principle called space repetition, where you incrementally increase the amount of time that elapses between when you learn a concept and when you revisit it. This is a really cool principle that really warrants its own video. So I'm not gonna get into all of the details today. I just wanna share with you a couple of practical tips for how you can implement this. So let's talk about what you can do within one session. Here, the key is to have a relatively sizable deck. So probably around 20 cards. It could be 20 vocabulary cards or a mixture of different cards, but you don't wanna have, let's say five cards, because then once you learn the concept, you are relying more on short-term memory when our goal is to rely on long-term memory. Now let's talk about what to do between sessions. So basically what we want to do is focus more on the difficult cards and leave a longer gap between when you revisit the simpler cards. Every time you sit down and you drill through a deck, you want to categorize your cards. So for the ones that you have a lot of difficulty with, you want to move it to a bin closest to you because you're going to be repeating this a lot more often. For cards that you already know very well, you move it to the bin furthest from you and you are going to let a lot more time elapse before you come back and revisit those cards. So in this way, you are really emphasizing the cards that you are struggling with, committing it first to short-term memory and then allowing it to move further and further into your long-term memory. And you're gonna do this with all your cards at some point all of your cards would have moved to the know very well pile. And at this point, you can let a week, two weeks, three weeks elapse before you come back and you try to retrieve that information. <sighs> Guys, that was it. Those were my tips for how you can use flashcards in your study and how you can boost their effectiveness. If you're wondering about the cards that I'm showing you in this video and you're thinking, those don't look like typical index cards, you are correct. These are some really cool products. I'm actually going to make a video very soon featuring this product. So if you're interested, please stay tuned for that.
If you like this video, give it a like. Let me know in the comments how you use flashcards in your studying. I have plenty more videos on my channel all about test taking strategies, so check those out. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified of more awesome content, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!